This video overviews a gorgeous winter migratory bird that can be found here in the Santa Cruz Mountains, the red-breasted sapsucker. Stay tuned. Good day, friends. Dylan McManus here with California State Parks talking to you from Henry Cal Redwood State Park. It's winter and I'm freezing my little tush off, but that's not gonna stop me from getting outdoors and finding a delightfully unique and somewhat uncommon migratory bird species of the park, the red-breasted sapsucker. I promise this bird will steal your heart at first glance. The colors are absolutely striking. Its personality, albeit shy and a bit cheeky, is also pretty adorable. So let's take a walk over to the particular habitat type that these birds are associated with and see what we can find. Okay, if we're gonna have any luck finding this bird, we need to be exceptionally mindful of how we're walking while in search of them. I like to slow my pace, reduce my voice and general volume, and be a bit discreet. Well, goody gumdrops, my friends. There's a red-breasted sapsucker in this tree, right here. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a closer look. Cowabunga, striking colors indeed. Red-breasted sapsuckers, as their name suggests, have red breast feathers, a uniformly red cap, a white polka dot between their beak and eye, and a mesmerizing checkerboard pattern on their wings. As members of the woodpecker family, they'll almost always be found clinging to the side of a tree or flying with an undulating flight pattern. As previously mentioned, these robin-sized birds are a winter migratory species. The populations this far south in their range move between coastal forests in the winter and eastern mountainous forests in the breeding season. One of the many interesting characteristics of red-breasted sapsuckers is the structure of their toes. They have what's known as zygodactyl feet, where the middle toes are facing forward and the outer toes are facing backward. Imagine a claw machine arcade game. This somewhat resembles zygodactyl feet in that the claw can effectively clasp and secure objects. This unique structure is precisely why sapsuckers and other woodpecker species can cling so brilliantly to vertical trees. Any day with a sapsucker is a good day, and surely we can't stop now. Let's see if we can find a few more. Discreetly in hopes of finding a red-breasted sapsucker. No way, you're looking for sapsuckers? Me too. There's actually one up in that tree right there. Really? You must have extraordinary eyesight. How did you do that? Well, just like it can be helpful to be stealthy and quiet when looking for these birds, it can also be fruitful to find a sit spot and wait for the birds to come to you. Red-breasted sapsuckers are highly associated with western sycamores, and if you know what specific signs to look for, you can hypothesize which sycamores they'll frequent. 
These birds spend an extraordinary amount of time drilling shallow holes into trees to facilitate the flow of sap and use a uniquely shaped tongue to drink their spoils. These shallow excavations are known as sap wells. So if you observe a Western sycamore with dozens of sap wells, take a seat, be patient, and chances are fair, you'll see a red-breasted sapsucker. You know, it's such a curious thing how woodpeckers can consistently drill into trees without damaging their little noggins. It's crazy, right? Researchers used to think that they had some spongy stuff in their skull that helped protect them, but in recent years, we found that might not be true. Hmm. Turns out there might be some other stuff that's helping protect them in that way. All that's to say, these birds are really sturdy, and that allows them to drill these holes super easily. Oh, oh woodpeckers. woodpeckers, how, how do, do you do it? it? Let's go find another sit spot. Okay, dope. What are you two doing out here? We were just looking for a sit spot to see if we could observe any red-breasted sapsuckers. What? You're out here appreciating sapsuckers? Me too. And I've got one in my spotting scope. Oh, sweet. That's very cool. Well, that's embarrassing. Here I was being a goofball trying to sneak up on these birds. And here I was just sitting and waiting around for them to come to me. Well, both of those approaches can be rewarding, but I find with such a shy bird species, it can be helpful to set up from a distance and watch from far away to avoid spooking them. And I've noticed when you watch from a distance, you can see some amazing interactions unfolding. Woodpeckers in general, and this includes the red-breasted sapsuckers, are a keystone species. This means that the well-being of other organisms in the ecosystem depends on their behavior and the services they provide. Without them, you see, there would be a significant change or even a collapse in the ecosystem. The sap wells created by the red-breasted sap suckers are often taken advantage of by many other animals during the winter months. I mean, who wouldn't want a delicious sugary drink? Sapsuckers, you continue to amaze us. It's always a pleasure to observe a species that's not only beautiful and showcases unique physical characteristics, but also gives back to the ecosystem and supports others within its community. It's also awesome to remember that even though this is a redwood park, there are so many different kinds of plants and animals that live here, all of which are awesome in their own ways. So this is your public service announcement to get outdoors this season. Go enjoy nature in your local parks and open spaces. And remember, recreate responsibly. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you around the parks. Bye. <sighs> oh, oh sap suckers. You, you continue, continue to amaze, amaze us. <laughs> That's so silly. It's so silly. I can't handle it. <laughs>